Hello there, let's welcome back to the Waifus. I am Sefi, and today I bring you my first impressions into Resonant Solstice. This is a new gacha in JP that's been out already for a year in the Chinese server. In fact, I think I made a previous video on this. I don't even remember the title. Good luck finding that video. But this is a game that finally provides at least a unique take on the Chibi's auto battlers. Yes, another Chibi auto battler. Now, before you leave, because it's a Chibi auto battler, stay with me, stick for a second so you can see what this game does different to other gacha games. Now, before we start, as usual, leave a like, subscribe if you like this content, feel free to support me on Coffee with the links in the description. And let's get started with the first impressions for Resonance Solstice. For the JP version, they changed the name and it's called Resonance JP. They also have a collab right now for your train. You can see a train behind my character. And yes, you will be able to drive your train around the map. <laughs> this game is basically, instead of focusing the meta around characters and a tier list, they focus the meta on trading. This is like playing if online, but it's even more pay to win. Actually, no. If Online is way, way more pay to win. If Online is one of the most pay to win games out there, I will say. But what is this game about? I'll show you the gameplay, the combat, the gacha, the skins a little bit that they have, and then my final thoughts if I would recommend playing this when it comes to global or not. So let's start with the most important part, the train itself. Okay, why is this train so good, Sefi? What's going on here? So let me go into start my engine, and as you can see, there is a big map, right? And you can go from one station into the other and, and just trade items. Of course, you will also progress through the story, have different combats, the main story itself, side quests. There is people who will ask you to deliver things from one station to the other, etc. But the good thing is that if I decide to go to another station, I click go, you will actually drive your train around. You can customize your train, have a skins for your train. They are doing a collab right now with Messenger C to actually buy a skin that will make your train look like a Messenger C Gundam, right? Pretty cool. But this is your train. You will go with your train around. You will actually see other players as well. So if another player is coming to the station, in fact, you guys will be able to see one right there, I believe, you will be able to just see them chilling, right? So let's actually uh, sprint a little bit here. You can change different cameras on the train. The cameras are up. Oh, well, we got to stop on a combat, right? Sometimes random enemies will stop you and will be like, hey, you cannot come through here. Either you bribe us or you fight us. We will fight. That way you also guys can see the combat before we keep going. This is my team right now. You bring five characters into the battle. Nothing interesting. There is positioning like in Trikal, like in Pricone. There is the back row, the middle line, and the front row. And of course, I got a lolly and a dude as my SSRs. I'm so lucky. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the combat itself. Combat is your usual auto battler chibi. It looked decent. I will say we've seen worse auto battlers when it comes to the card system, just like counter side and everything we've seen uh, previously. Nothing unique. There is auto, you don't have to worry too much. There is no two times the speed, or I haven't found two times the speed. That's the only thing I dislike. I will love a three times the speed because most combats you don't care, right? You just see like to drive your train. That's the fun part of this game. <laughs> but when it comes to the combat, this is basic beach combat. There are ultimates. We without a burst animation or without cutscenes, if you will. And every time you finish a combat, you will not only get experience, but materials that are important. And this is important as well because there is a lot of enemies in the map. You can attack every day and they will give you materials that you need actually to progress on the story and to sell and trade in other places. By the way, as you can see, this is a train coming up, which is another player. He is going to the station we were in. So you can see other players and you can switch the camera to different perspective on your train. All of these enemies you see on the map, you can find them and they will give you materials that actually make sense. I do not know if these enemies respawn after a day or not, or it's a one-time thing, but there is a lot of them. Uh, so, this is the base gameplay itself, right? You go from one station to the other. Now, where is the good part and the unique part? Because if it was only this, it would be kind of boring, right? The unique part comes in the trading system, because this game is not about the meta, but about how much money you are making with your train. So, let me actually open up a couple tools so you guys can see them. So, while we arrive into the next station, let me pull up the spreadsheet. <laughs> This is the spreadsheet for the game to know where the prices are low and where they are high for you to be selling and buying stuff on the Chinese version. The Chinese bros like this game a lot, as you can see. Not only this spreadsheet, which is a QQ dog, but there's also a website 
are dedicated just to this, just to calculate the best trips you could be making that day. Because again, this also changes. This was different yesterday. I don't know how often the prices change, but these tools are really fucking good. They also allow you to plan your trips based on what you have on your inventory. So this game is literally not about the combat so much, but from going to point A to point B, and as you can see, we are right here, and then you come into the station and you'll be able to buy and sell whatever you have on your train. You can also customize your whole train, how many cards you have, what type of cards you have, etc. So every city or every station, sorry, will have all of these different things. There is interactions with your characters, recovering stamina, there is of course combat, there is going in dates with your characters, and the important one, the trader right here. Traders have two options. They have buying stuff, as you can see, and you'll be able to buy at a low price, for example, right, if you want it, at an 88%, and you can just buy this. You can also haggle a little bit how much you want to spend. As you can see, every time you're purchasing something, you're going to be getting a report as well on how much money you've made that day. This is selling, not buying. So if I wanted to sell anything here, I would go to anything above 110%. So that's the gameplay. Literally, you will come to, from one station to the other. You're going to be trading all day. This is like playing the Euro Truck Simulator, but with the gacha system. You can haggle a little bit the price to pay less taxes. As you can see, we can sell all of this. And you're going to be getting every day a report on how much you're spending and how much you're making. Pretty cool. Again, this is a little simple take or a unique take on gacha games that usually are kind of boring. Now, all that japping about the gameplay, let's talk about the gacha, the skins, and the characters themselves. So when it comes to the gacha, it's a 2%. 1% for the right tap, 1% for enough banner. There is a right tap banner right there, and then there is the normal regular banners with the specific characters. Uh, of course, we're trying to go for the waifu, but we've been quite unlucky. The animation is quite nice. You press the button, you call the train, and you see the light, it's blue, we got nothing. If the light is purple or gold, you know if you got anything. Something that I like outside the gacha is the characters themselves, because all of them have L2Ds. So if I go to even a normal character, like this one right here, she gets her L2Ds, and when you max her out, she will get a new L2D as well, as you can see quite pretty. The skins I don't like a lot. This is a paid skin and it's like, okay, the skins themselves are not honestly great. There is no a lot of fan service. So outside of the unique take of you're maintaining your train and customizing it, I don't think it's an amazing game. I don't think it provides, even with this new uh, train mechanic, right? Even with this train mechanic, if you will. I don't think the game provides enough for me to be like, oh, I'm interested in playing this on global. Will I try it when it comes out in global so I can see the character personalities and understand it and, you know, overall what they change? Yeah, of course I would. But I don't see myself playing this long term. When it comes to the shop, pretty standard bullshit shop for any gacha. All right, every gacha has the same shop. They are all awful. This is the usual shop with your monthly card, your battle passes, your multiple packs every single day. The battle pass gives you a skin every battle pass but like i was saying as you can see this is the skin on top of me i just don't like the skin like i don't think the fan service in the game is enough to keep me interested even if i were to come here and i were to show you guys for example this is the skins for the train i think they are quite expensive so this is the a messenger c skin and it's 30 bucks and it's limited I don't know when it's going out or if it will be coming back, but it's for 30 bucks. You do not get even a multi. You're getting just the trainer skin, half, uh, almost a multi, and then some decorations for your character. That's it. Nothing else. Also, the trainer skins have stats. You're going to be going faster with this skin than if you were to go with the normal one. When it comes to the other skins themselves, I don't really like them. So these are the skins of the game. And as you can see, they are not that great in terms of, like I was saying, fan service. Seppi, you only play fake games for fan service. Yes! I, I literally called you the generates at the beginning of my videos. The fucking thing I'm playing games for. To collect waifus. Exactly. God bless collecting good looking PNGs. So, all in all, I like the game. I like a lot the concept of driving your train and trading around. And you can train all day if you want and make money. But the gameplay is quite lacking. It's just a chill to butter. And there is not enough fan service for me to like this game. Some of the new Chinese characters look super good. And I'll put them on the thumbnail. But that's about it. So once again, like I was saying, an interesting take on the chill to butter with some new mechanics. But not enough for me. That said. Enough japping about this game. Do let me know if you guys would play this or not. And that's gonna be it for this one. As usual, thank you to my patrons for making this content possible. Love you all, bossos, and see you in the next one.
役立たずは楽園から追放するのみブランとノワールのショータイムです戦地万物を切るとはこういうことです